back to using Creo. We're going to get right back into Direct Modeling Express and start modeling things. The last little bit that we did there was just trying to get the interface looking like something that we could you know, be a little more agreeable to. I wasn't uh, all that happy with the defaults. Now I'm going to start modeling up uh, a little plastic part that I had made for weightlifting. And um, with that, I needed to create the weight. So we're going to create the weight and possibly jump into a little bit of that little module. But let's keep things short and simple. We'll do the weight first. And then in the next episode, we'll cover how to make the little part and, and different modeling techniques and, and what I've learned so far. So first thing is, is that you'll start out with an interface that looks like this. And if you click on the actual work plane, just on the edge of the work plane, you'll see this little command manager come up. And we're just going to create a circle. And here's one thing that first thing that kind of stumped me is that there was no origin. And like, you know, how am I going to make sure that all the parts are centered and stuff? Don't worry about the origin. There really is no origin on something like this. So let's just grab a point and drag it out. And you can see that the diameter of the circle is coming out. But like, well, I want to actually have some constraints. Like I already know that the weight itself is nine and a half inches in diameter for a 10 pound weight. So how do I adjust that diameter? Well, it turns out that all you have to do is you have to hit the space bar and you come in here. Now, you see this is set up for a diameter mode. And what if you're the kind of person who likes to work with radius? So first thing we're gonna do is, let's assume that I like the diameter mode. I'll turn it back to this, but let's just take a look at what we have here. They have the 2D Copilot settings. We're just gonna click on that and we're gonna bring this up. And it'll start here with the snapping and everything. But in miscellaneous, you can have diameter mode, or if you don't have diameter mode selected, and we close that, we hit the space bar again, you'll notice that you can see the dimension is, is set the radius. Now, again, I said that I really like to use the diameter, so I'll turn on the diameter mode, we'll close that, hit the space bar again. And now that we have the set diameters, I can click on this and say 9.5 inches and be done with it. At that point, we have a circle that's perfect for what I need. And the inner circle that I have here um, needs to be two and an eighth inches so we're just going to create another circle right inside of here and sometimes the the command just uh, takes you straight into moving something around and that's not what I want you can come back and, and click on the work plane and you know using this command manager choose another circle and you'll notice that it snaps into place where you need it so we got that we're going to create that. Let's assume that that's way too much. But if I hit the space bar and I come in here, I can do 2.1875. We'll hit enter and that gives us the inside of that weight. And this is all groovy. Now we've got the, the two circles and to create any 3D geometry off of this is quite simple. At this point, we're just going to do a pole linear. Um, in the next episode, I'll show you what the pull angulator does, but the pull in here and it will cr um, create a boss based off of the outline of what you have for the part. And right in here, you'll notice that I can edit this and I know that this is 0.75 thick and we're just going to say, okay. Now this is one thing that I kind of find annoying about this, this software. And if anybody knows the answer to this, I'd really appreciate you leave a comment is that you always have to move over and hit a checkbox. See, there's a checkbox down here or a checkbox up here and this doesn't seem to be any right click or, or shift click or middle mouse button any way to just sort of exit out of that command without having to mouse over to that checkbox. Um, maybe maybe it's just me but I find that kind of annoying but yeah anyways I, I digress. Now I'm just going to escape out of this. Now we've got this sketch here and one thing that I've found is, is that some of these sketches once in a while kind of get in your way because I want to do some more operations on this weight but you know am I going to end up having to work with this sketch and I don't want to sit here and have to select all these sketch elements. If you have something that's quite complex and you just want to get rid of it you know we've got the 3D geometry is if you click on the actual um, plane you can come in here and you can delete all 2D and that gets rid of all that 2D for you so that you still have that plane here if you really need it. Um, you can remove that work plane if you want. You can also come into here in the feature manager and, and delete it so that you don't have any work plane but you still have the 3D geometry as you need it. So with the weight I have it has a little indent in it so I'm just going to select the face and go you know what I need to do some more sketching with these little parts here, I'm actually thinking that it's more a, uh, 
an aesthetic thing, so I'm not really going to kill myself with dimensions. And here's a good example of having to hit that checkbox. Now, I made that one circle, and I can make that other circle, and I can check out of there. But it was kind of a pain having to run over there and hit that checkbox. I didn't. I don't know if there's any way to not have to hit that checkbox. But anyways, we're going to go to pull. It's going to grab that sketch. We're just going to pull it down into this weight just a little ways. Let's say something like this. We'll say, let's see, it was 3 quarter inches. So well, 0.3 is actually pretty good. Well, I'll say 0.4 just to be safe here. And we'll go OK. And now we've got all that set up. But again, I don't want to deal with any of that sketch anymore. I've got what I need out of it, so I'm just going to delete it out. And now we have things set up so that we have the weight in its sort of basic form. There are a few things, though. Let's say I want to modify this. If you take a look at a weight, generally these edges are chamfered. And it's a chamfer. Um, I really have to give kudos to PTC for this because I click on the edge. It says I want to create a chamfer. And at this point, I can give it a dimension, or I can just pull the handles and create the dimension as I need. And I also want that one to be chamfered. And let's assume that all these edges here are all chamfered. So now that it's all done, again, you have to come down here. Here's that annoying checkbox. It would be really nice if I didn't have to move my mouse over here to say OK. But that's just the way things are. And we've got that set up so pretty nice now. So let's take another quick look here and let's assume that the cut doesn't go straight in like I have it set up here just going straight in on the way that there actually is a bit of a taper or some draft here. Well one thing I really like is again this uh, control manager comes up. I click on the face and there's this one thing if you hover over it it changes the taper. That might be the angle but then you have to give it a reference. What's it tapering kind of around? What axis? So I'm going to just actually choose that circle and at this point, I'm just going to taper it out just, I don't know, let's say 15 degrees. 30 is a bit much. So we'll say 15. And that reversed things. That's not quite the way I wanted it to be. So let's uh, flip that back over. And well, it seems maybe I was incorrect on the taper. Let's just escape out of this real quick and we're going to hit taper again. We're going to choose this as the axis. And we'll just rotate this down. Once we get to the 26, we'll do 15. We'll hit enter. That looks good. And we hit that checkbox. And there we go. You can see that it added that taper just the way it would be normally. Um, I'm sure we could have done the taper here as well at the same time. But we'll just add this a secondary, the secondary taper. And we want it to kind of go out like that. So again, we move it around, we go to 15, we say that that's okay, and we go to checkbox, and we've got the tapers just as we want. And I also noticed that there was some fillets in here, so let's just grab that edge and you go, okay, well, we want to fill it. Now, fillet selection on this is really easy, um, because nothing really joins up, but I found that working on the other part that we're going to see here in a little bit, um, this little weight doodad that I have, um, the selection order of the edges that you're going to fill it makes a big difference. Now you can fill it just that one edge. We have a 0.11, let's just do 0.1, which is good. And you'll notice that I can select other edges and fill it a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time and be done with it. So now we've got all those fillets done, we're going to say OK. And we've got the foundation weight for what we need to do for building that, that next part. And this is all fine and dandy, and, but like at this point, some people start scratching their head and going, well, you know, what do I do from here? How do I make that, that, new, uh, that new part? And the first thing a lot of people do is they come in here and go, well, I need to add a part. It doesn't quite work that way. Come into the modeling, and you can add a new part based off of that. And part 2, you can give it a name, so we'll call it the widget. And we'll say OK. And at that point, now we're actively editing the widget. And you'll notice that these lines, these exterior lines and tangent lines and stuff are all black, just like I had set it up before in the last episode so that it looks like a part that I want. And um, it's you know, already got a, the right color and everything. This happens to be steel, but the widget I'm going to want to be a different color. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do that in the next episode. Hopefully this has just helped you out on starting out on making a basic part. And... Um, Next week, what we will do is make that little widget.